I spoke about this on your podcast, and I kind of wanted to talk about it more on here. The Cleveland Cavaliers, we are doing absolutely fantastic. Like, it's... Yes, we are. It, it is stunning, but I still feel like even though we're doing above average, it'd still be really cool to look on a couple things that I think, you know, we can fix or, you know, some players to bring in. And I've got two, and here's the one that we talked about on your podcast, and I wanted to get you know, your thoughts and opinions on it, maybe a possible trade scenario with it. But of course, Brandon Ingram, I've been saying this for a while and I think you made a video on it. Brandon Ingram is possibly the most perfect player the Cavaliers could go out and get right now. He's a small forward that we desperately need. Shot creator that can come in and average you 20 points per game. Can be your number one leader while still making sure that Darius Garland, you know, stays doing what he's doing. I don't think he would take away from Garland's performance. I just think if there's an all-star to go out and get, Brandon Ingram is the guy. So I just wanted to get your thoughts and opinions on that. I would agree. If that's your number one candidate for Brandon Ingram, I think, and I think a lot of Cleveland uh, fans would agree, because I think, um, like you said, I don't think Brandon Ingram truly gets in the way of Garland. I think he's the type of player that will complement Darius Garland perfectly, because Darius Garland, he's, he's a passer. Like, he really... Like, he, he can shoot the ball, he can score, but his first instinct is really to give up the ball, which, you know, with a player like Brandon Ingram, who you can tell he wants to be a franchise player, is just mm. not in his benefit to do it in New Orleans. But, yeah, I, I would agree with you. I think Ingram would be a great candidate. Uh, maybe Cam on a lesser degree, but I do think uh, Brandon Ingram will be yeah. good, too. I think as well, when I look at the Pelicans, they are pretty trash right now. Like, that's that's the obvious thing. And it's clear that Brandon Ingram is their best player. In my opinion, in my opinion, I think he's their best player. But I think it's pretty obvious that New Orleans have a very different opinion. I think they definitely rate Zion well above him. And I honestly, I don't think that sits well with Brandon Ingram at all. Um, so Do you think he's better than Who you Do I think uh, uh, Ingram's Brad- better than Valanciunas? <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. I do. I do think he's better than... I th- I love Valanciunas. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the game. He's been one of the most underrated for so long. Like, I think it was a huge W they were able to get him from Memphis. But I do think Brandon In- Ingram is better. Um, But I don't think Brandon Ingram is really playing to the best of his ability right now. And I don't know. I just feel like you can tell by even the way you watch him, it doesn't feel like he's putting his best effort in. And I just don't think... I have a feeling he doesn't really want to be in New Orleans right now. So that's where I think the Cavaliers should come in and swoop. But maybe that's just me. I think he doesn't want to be in New Orleans right now. They've put Zion ahead of him um, multiple times. And they're not winning. They're not doing too good. It doesn't seem like he has the attitude over there. So I don't know. I, I definitely think we should trade for Brandon Ingram. But what do you think we would have to give up to like get this deal done? Now, that's... um that a lot of people on my on my channel have been asking me too. Mm. Um, at this point, I think we would have to give up SETI uh, for sure. Um, I think Colin Sexton would also be another player they would want. Um, the only problem with that is, though, I think they might wait closer to um, to the offseason to see where Colin Sexton health-wise stands, right? Because mm. right now um, they're in a situation – because it just came out uh, Zion might miss more time now because of uh, – like uh, foot soreness or ankle soreness. Yeah, or I think his rehab's been delayed too. Uh, yeah, something like that. So, so, so right now, and David Griffin is under a lot of fire because people feel like he should not have traded Lonzo. Now Lonzo's hooping. Shouldn't have traded Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday won a championship, and people is arguing that Drew Holiday is a very underrated point guard, which he's been for a countless amount of years. And then um, people don't think the the assets you got back in Graham has really filled that void. Now, like you said, Valachunas was a huge deal, right? I think he complements the team better than Adams because he shoots drastically better. Yep. Um, but right now, you have a team that for a lot of – like if this was in the East, this would be – would have been a playoff contender for sure. Like this would probably be a um, – honestly maybe a seventh or sixth seed in the east um and to be honest in the west this probably should be an eighth or seventh seed in the west too but they're not looking really competitive so um i think 
Uh, yeah, so I think a, a realistic trade value would probably be closer to the uh, d- uh, trade deadline if it's the Cavs, and they yeah. probably have to give up. Set, he, yeah, Seti Osman, Colin, and maybe one or two first rounders. Yeah. For in- <clears throat> well, I think the thing was too, when Zion got injured, I think David Griffin, I actually kind of feel bad for him because there was the rumor in the offseason that the reason they actually let Lonzo go was because they wanted Zion to run like a ver- a very different style this year. Apparently, he was going to run a lot of point forward. So basically, they brought in Devontae Graham because Devontae Graham can actually play a little bit of off-ball like he has done it with Terry Rozier. I think he's done all right with it. In my opinion, he's more of a six-man, though. I don't know why they brought him in to start. But then you got Valanciunas, who's there, who they brought in to be a really good floor spacer. Um, They brought in, oh, what's his name? Uh, whoever they drafted this year, I forgot his name, but he's a really good like three-point shooter. They brought him in to come in and bring threes. I really can't remember his name. I don't know why. Oh, Trey Murphy. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, they brought him in to be a really good, you know, three-point shooter, a floor spacer. So, hey, if Brandon Ingram wants to go and they get Zion back to his best and you bring in like Jetty Osman or Colin Sexton, that means Colin Sexton can therefore start a point guard. Then you bring Graham off the bench. And Jetty Osman, dude, he's scoring like 42% from three this season. He... He would be great with Zion, I think. Yeah. And then you're you're looking at a, a really interesting team. Like you got a big three of Colin Sexton, Zion, and Valanciunas. And then you've got floor spaces like Trey Murphy, Jetty Osman, and then still depth off the bench with Josh Hart and Devontae Graham. It could actually Absolutely. be a win win situation for both teams, in my opinion. Yeah, and I agree. Um, because um and it kind of made me well when you said it earlier. Um, cause I wanted to go back on that too. Like when you said, you kind of wondered why they have Devontae Graham in the stern rotation. I think it's kind of because they don't really trust, uh, uh, Nikhil yet shooting wise. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I think, and I think that's really, that was, I think that was a, a bigger reason why they traded Zoe as well, or was willing to let him go because I think they feared if Lonzo would be consistent next season shooting wise. Cause I think, um, the thing about Lonzo, right. The, I mean, not, uh, the thing about Zion, the thing about Zion is if you wanted to have him play the point four, point guard type style, like let's say like a LeBron James, right? Everybody else has to shoot the ball, right? And which is why they instantly traded Adams because they feared if Zion is going straight to the paint, he needs people to kick it out to, which is why Valanciunas was key. Brandon mm-hmm. Ingram improving on his shot was key. And I think that's why Devontae Graham instantly started because they wanted to see how efficient he would be, yep. you know in that position. Now, Josh Hart has been, been playing pretty decent as well, too. So I think um, that is an option. You get like, yeah. that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. That is an option for them. Now for, like I said, with uh, Colin Sexton, if that trade to be happening, he would have to improve on his shooting, um, which might be the problem. And also the question of him being off ball guard, yeah, which might be a yeah. question too. Because right now, I think with Cleveland, to an extent, ex- is has exposed him a little bit because mm. so far in the beginning of the season, and I think you might have said this the last time we was on a podcast, but you was like, if you really look at the scheme uh, we're running offensively, we're passing it a lot more, right? Yep. And because Colin Sexton is not dribble, 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 iso, 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 his efficiency has, has dropped mm. from the games he played. So I think right now that might hesitate him possibly, but, you know, he would have to improve on that if the Pelicans even thought of him as a trade option. You know what I think, too? The reason I think it makes more sense for Sexton to be on the Pelicans than the Cavaliers is because, um, see, if, if Sexton was the second option to be, like, the second, um, you know, shot creator or something like that, on the Pelicans, I think that would work because he still gets to guard the point guard position. But as the second option on the Cavs, he has to guard the shooting guard position, which I just don't think he's necessarily fully capable of doing not just that i think if the pelicans you know if they do run zion as the point forward um and and he's not having like a good game and they need someone to step up and make shots then you've got colin sexton who's right there that can definitely come and do it and some people might say well they could just do that with brandon ingram though the other thing with brandon ingram too is i don't think i don't think this new game plan or system really even sat well with him from the start because, you know, when he signed there, it was kind of like, well, the ball was going to be run through him and Zion, right? It seems like now that the Pelicans, they want to run Zion as the point forward, the ball would be focusedly run through 
Zion, and it would be more like, well, if Zion's having a bad game, then we need you to step up, Ingram. Not necessarily both of them being, you know, the driving factor from the get-go. Um, it would always be Ingram would be number two to Zion. I think with Sexton, I think that actually wouldn't sit exactly too bad with him. I definitely feel like it would sit better with him than what maybe Brandon Ingram. Um, because, you know, Sexton, therefore, if we got to the Pelicans, would be able to guard the one instead of the two. So I, I still feel like, you know, I reckon this trade should go through, but I'm I'm agreeing with you. I don't think it's going to go down to potentially till the end of the season because, like, I just have a feeling there's no way the Pelicans will be ready to trade for Sexton yet, especially if they're, you know, playing pretty bad right now. And it, it's kind of just like, well, there's no rush, right? There's no rush. The Cavaliers yeah. are not in a rush right now. Wherever we finish, if we make the play in, that's a positive, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think we're in a rush, and I don't necessarily think they are too much in a rush because I feel like David Griffin, no matter what happens, I have a feeling he'll get one more year. Because I still feel like he's built this team relatively all right. It's just he's run into some bad luck and the coaching decisions he's made has been... I think he's hired some pretty bad coaches along the way. So, yeah, I, I still I still think we'll get one more year, to be honest. I guess that's where I... I well, I, I agree, but disagree. I, I agree with, like you said, I uh, he, he might get one more year. I just, I just don't feel like... A lot of his decisions was wrong, especially with coaching, right? I, I do think he, he shouldn't have fired Alvin Gentry, but I don't think uh, Stan Van Gundy really was that bad. And the reason why is because when you <laughs> – and I know that might be a tough take, but, mm-hmm. like, I, like, um, because when you really – because at this point I really was kind of – kind of surfacing on some some of the New Orleans games. Like, if you really look at that, Lonzo Ball had his most efficient year with him not being an off-ball guard, right? Yes, he wanted Lonzo to, you know, play make, to create, but, but Zion is just the only reason it didn't truly work is because Lonzo kept – I mean, not Lonzo. Well, yeah, Lonzo kept getting hurt, kind of, and then Zion was getting hurt a little bit, and then Ingram – and then they just could not keep – they couldn't have – the chemistry just wasn't sticking, right, because the team wasn't there, right? But I think from a efficient standpoint, it was quite efficient, and Zion was technically already playing the point forward too. Mm. So I, I think to a degree he actually gave them the formula, but he also showed you the formula only works if Zion on the floor, Yeah, right? Um, so I, I think – um David Griffin, so far, I think he, honestly, so far, I would give him a P plus so far. Like, because every move he realized he had to do, he made it. The only thing I would question, the reason why I would give him a, the B plus is really because I don't think he should have traded Lonzo. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think he I think he took the criticism of that too high. And I think that may have cost him. I can see why he traded Drew Holiday from an age standpoint, a money standpoint. Yeah. And three first round picks. Yeah.